This is Roberta Foster. Welcome to today's edition of the Author's Corner, brought to you by KNEO, 91.7 FM, The Word. And today I welcome James Bradford to Author's Corner. He and his wife, Mindy, wrote the book Masculinity by Design, which is published by Ironstream. And he'll tell you more about how to find the book at the end of the program. Let me give you a little bit about James and Mindy. Uh, James is a father of three and shares his life of trials and traumas from his time in the military as a business owner and as a youth pastor through his unique storytelling. As he intricately weaves God's word into his messages, He calls men to rise up, assume their role as leaders in their families, and live according to God's design for manhood. Mindy, a mother of two, is a retired special education teacher. She graduated in 1989 from Asbury University with a Bachelor of Arts in Education. In 2009, she earned her Master of Science in Special Education from Southern Illinois University, and they reside in Southwest Florida. James, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. And so um, what inspired you to write this book? Has this always been a long-held dream that you'd be writing a book? (laughs) No, it's it's actually quite fascinating how this thing unfolded. uh, Mindy and I both uh, were recovering from um, very difficult, painful divorces. She was married for 30 years. I was married for 28 years. And we both have a ministry background. And so when we met, the first thing that we talked about was it was critically important for us that whoever we were going to to date or be with in the future, morning devotions was a critical component mm. of our relationship because our previous marriages did not have that. So it's okay. very important to both of us. So we started doing morning devotions, and I've always had a passion for um, being a good father, good husband. Back in my days as a youth minister, I used to regularly you know, do men's events for the for the fathers of of my youth group. So I'm sharing with Mindy out of our devotions kind of this stuff that's been in my heart for 25, 30 years. And she leaned back one day and she said, Jim, we got to write this stuff down. This is actually pretty good. And I'm like, really? (laughs) So that's kind of how the whole thing unfolded. And and she kind of helped take all my rough content and helped make it make sense. And uh, so that's really how the book was written. And so what would you say is the main message of your book? The main message of the book is Matthew 6.33 is really the foundation where it says, Seek first the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. There's a king and there's a kingdom. There's a design to everything. I'm an air conditioning contractor. I'm also an electrical contractor. The law of electricity, when honored, can keep you alive, and when violated, (laughs) it will kill you. It doesn't care what we think. It just is. Mm. Same way with God's design. There is a design to everything. Specifically, there's a design to us as men. And unfortunately, almost all of us have had that design misrepresented. So that's the first section of the book. I talk about my childhood very openly and candidly. And I had a false definition of manhood, mm. and it set me off on a wrong trail. Then I got saved, fell in love with the Father Heart of God, and uh, so then the book is really, that's why we say Finding True North, it's to help men find their way back to God designed for them as men. And so, describe what this design for men that God has when he created man and then woman. Great question. Uh, I, I think Jesus Jesus really says it so plainly. He says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he also said in John 20, the same way the Father sent him, he's sending us. So our primary focus as men is to be an image bearer of the Father. When people see us and they're in our presence, they should, mm. they should see and sense the Father heart of God. That is, that's our primary role uh, as men. Well, you mentioned um, that you started out the book talking about your relationship with your father. So share a little bit about that and how that impacted your um, growing up and um, your relationship with God the Father. I was not raised in a, in a Christian home. My father was, um, he was an abusive alcoholic. Um, and I mentioned this one section in the book. He introduced me to pornography when I was in first grade. Uh. Um, and that just, 
uh, it was just, it was a very, very toxic environment. Mm -hmm. Um, However, I developed coping skills to learn how to navigate that. And I share a lot of that in the book, and it set me off on a wrong course. It gave me a false identity. Um, And I I, I talked to men, like literally, I was at a 7-Eleven this morning getting gas and was talking to a man in 7-Eleven struggling with the same thing. Mm. It's just an epidemic of of, uh, men trying to find their way. And culture right now is cutting hard at um, genuine masculinity as well. Mm -hmm. Well, today I'm talking with James Bradford about the book he has written with his wife, Mindy. It's called Masculinity by Design, Finding True North. And you're listening to Author's Corner. I'm Roberta Foster. If you miss any part of today's interview or would like to hear it again, you can find it on your favorite podcast provider or through KNEO.org. So as I'm thumbing through the book, I see that your book is divided into four sections, each with a topic of design. Can you share with us what those designs are and maybe a short description of the content? Absolutely. Uh, the first section I mentioned earlier about being an image bearer, and that, that is the section that um, most men that have been in church any length of time have heard that before. We come at it a little differently. I look at a lot of Jesus the man, since I'm a contractor, about Jesus the carpenter, and what it means to be an image bearer in the real world, in a real way, where we represent the Father heart of God. The second section of the book is really the area that transformed my life in a radical way. My my first marriage was struggling greatly, and um, I felt like the Holy Spirit took, took me to the book of Hosea in the Old Testament. Mm. And Hosea 2.16 says, the day is coming where God's speaking. You'll no longer call me maker, but you'll call me husband. And now we know that we are all part of the bride of Christ. So I felt like God challenged me. Are you being the bride to me that you're desiring your wife to be to you? Mm. And, And it challenged me in a radical way. And that section of the book is the one that's been the most transformative. I have had men go through that section and literally walk away from pornography after that section. Hallelujah. So uh, very, and that's one of the things that um, that Iron Stream and them really enjoyed about that section. It's just a very unique look, the biblical look when you read through it. It's, and it's going to stretch, it's going to challenge men in a str- strong way. And I'm very, very transparent um, in that section. That's, that, that's a that's a pivotal section. And the last section is um, we're designed to be disciples. And um, that's just, you know, he, that's the Great Commission. We're called to be disciples, and it's really a deep look at uh, what does that look like? What does a real disciple look like in a real world? Section three was we're, de- we're designed to be disciples. Designed section to be two, the perfect wife. That's the one I talked about, Hosea. The perfect oh. wife is the bride of Christ. Yeah, to be the perfect wife is being the, the bride of Christ. That's that section. That's the, the middle section. Because uh, the first section is design misrepresented. second section is designed to be an image bearer. The third section, then, is designed to be the perfect wife. That's the roots in Hosea. That's the most transformative part, in my view, of the book to help men really walk in how God designed them to be. And then the final section would be designed to be the side. Okay. Well, thank you for the recapping again. Uh, James, why don't you tell us what are the most challenging aspects of God's design for masculinity, and has that changed maybe um, from 20 years ago to today as far as the challenges go? I, I don't think it's changed. I think at the very core of it, the most challenging aspect of it, are you really going to surrender to the will of God? Mm. That's really the bottom line. Okay. Because the truth is, it says we've been bought at a price. Our life is no longer our own. That's the deal. And trusting God's goodness, just surrendering to his will, actually is the best choice a man can make. So that's really, I think, the most challenging part, because when you surrender to God's will, then you have to be willing to face rejection. And men struggle with fear of rejection. Mm. So I think at the core, 
that's really that's really the hurdle that that men struggle getting over. Okay. Well, um, you didn't have a great role model as you were a child, but um, in the meantime, you have realized uh, the power of a father. Uh, so you also talk about the differences between what a son needs from his dad versus what a daughter needs from her dad. And can you share with us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, really, what a son needs, is a sense of sonship apart from any behavior. What Jesus was baptized by, John the Baptist, God the Father spoke, said, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. Jesus had not done anything yet. He's not preached the message. He's not healed anybody. Mm. See, God the Father established, You are my son. Mm. Period. Mm -hmm. End of story. And if a child doesn't have that, if a, if a man as a young boy doesn't have sonship, then we go look to find it. Mm. We go look to find it. Um, and with women, young girls, they need to know their value. Mm -hmm. They need to know their value. That literally, they are the daughter of the Most High God, mm -hmm. maker of heaven and earth. Mm. And they should be treated as such. Mm -hmm. um, and when they really know their value um, it changes you know them going to looking to be valued in unhealthy ways mm -hmm. I can see that well we're nearing the end of our time together so what result would you like to see uh, from those that uh, read your book I really want to see a real revival of m among men but I don't mean that in the church sense revival I mean, revive, like come back to life. There is an epidemic right now of suicide among men. Mm. 100, 105 to 110, depending on which one stat you read, 105 men every day take their life. Oh. Every day. 80% 80, 80 of all suicides are men. And it's because they've lost their way, they've lost their voice, they've lost their purpose. So I hope this book, and we just released the Work Companion Workbook, helps men reestablish their identity, reestablish their purpose in life, which will then give them a reason to pursue life mm -hmm. and live again. So that's mm. our hope for the book. Amen. Well, right now I'm talking with James Bradford, who co-wrote Masculinity by Design with his wife, Mindy. So James, tell our listeners how they can find out about your book and your workbook that you just mentioned. Yes. Uh, the work, uh, the book is on Amazon. It's also on IronStreamMedia.com. The workbook that literally just got to our our hands a week ago. The workbook can be found on IronStreamMedia.com. And right now, there's a promo code Man15. They're both found on IronStreamMedia.com. All right. Since you've written this book, are, do you have plans for others? I think so. <laughs> uh, I think uh, this book is kind of establishing True North, if you will. And uh, we feel like kind of this is the book that will get men back up on their feet. Okay. And we feel like there's going to be another one then to kind of help them, help them walk forward. So uh, definitely believe there will definitely be something coming in the future. All righty. So one more time, the book today is Masculinity by Design, Finding True North written by James and Mindy Bradford. And we do thank Iron Stream for giving us a copy of the book to talk about. And James, it's been a true pleasure talking with you today. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. And to our listeners, we appreciate you tuning in. This is Roberta Foster on The Author's Corner. Join me again next time. God's Word speaks truth. God's work speaks life. And God's Word speaks to us today. Hi, I'm Pastor John Marins of the Granby Christian Church. Each week we explore God's Word together on In the Shadow of Your Wings, a radio broadcast on KNEO. Tune in each Saturday at 6.45 p.m. to hear the show. And if you ever miss it, you can always view the archive online at kneo.org. We also have the program available as a podcast as well, so you can listen anytime, anywhere. It's available from Sky High 
Podcast Network. I invite you to check out the show and learn more about our incredible God and how He cares for you. You can trust Him. You can depend on Him. And you can rest in the shadow of His wings. 